Coming up, Governor Doug Burgum declares a statewide emergency in the wake of the latest severe winter storm. A dubious ranking for North Dakota when it comes to gambling. And a big announcement regarding a brand new school in the FM Metro. Hello and welcome to the Nightly Review. I'm Tom Tucker. We begin with a look at tonight's headlines, then a closer look with the topic tonight, how the soaring costs of building materials for homes is impacting the work of Habitat for Humanity in Cass and Clay counties. And in tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation, my guest is the son of baseball legend Roger Maris, talking about his father's impact on the lives of local cancer patients. But first tonight, Governor Doug Burgum is declaring a statewide emergency following the severe winter storm over the weekend. The storm caused flooding and widespread utility infrastructure damage. The governor also declared a disaster for areas impacted by the historic blizzard from April 12th through the 14th because of local costs incurred for snow removal. About 1,500 people are still without power in the northwestern part of the state as crews work to restore service. Power was knocked out across much of the region over the weekend after the storm and high winds. A spokesperson for one utility company says rain and freezing temperatures coated lines with ice and wind brought the poles and lines down. Power companies are facing challenges in reaching damaged power lines and those downed poles. The National Weather Service says the Red River is expected to crest by midweek. The river in the greater Grand Forks area was at nearly 44 feet yesterday morning and is expected to crest at 48 and a half feet by late tomorrow into early Thursday morning. The Sorty and Point Bridges are closed in Grand Forks because of the high water. The Kennedy Bridge along Gateway Drive remains open. Ranchers are fighting the weather and power outages as calving season continues. After two blizzards in two weeks, the National Agricultural Statistics Service says calving season is only two-thirds complete. The weekly crop report shows 24% of ranchers are experiencing heavy calf death losses. That's up from 5% two weeks ago. The Stockman's Association and its foundation are launching the Hope After Haley Disaster Relief Fund with an initial contribution of $40,000. Officials in the West Fargo School District have selected a name for the new school in the district, Meadowlark Elementary. The school board met last night and approved the new name from a selection of seven finalists. Community members submitted nearly 350 names for their consideration. North Dakota Insurance Commissioner John Godfried has a warning for the state's gig delivery drivers. Since the pandemic and really even before that, we've had a, a, a recent uptick. I'm sure you use them, Uber Eats or Instacart or Food Dudes or you name it. I mean, there's a bunch of these different delivery services out there uh, have, have really taken off, especially during that pandemic. Now, if you drive for one of these companies, Godfrey says you should check your car insurance policy to make sure you have coverage to provide commercial driving services. He says gig drivers are finding they're not covered when they're involved in accidents. Godfrey says it's a matter of making a simple change to your policy and says it's not cost prohibitive. The personal finance website WalletHub has released its 2022 most gambling addicted states and North Dakota ranks near the top. The Peace Garden State came in 10th overall, including first in casinos per capita and legality of daily fantasy sports. South Dakota came in as the second most gambling addicted state, while to no one's surprise, Nevada came in first. A former Williston teacher is back in court for a plea hearing. Everest Moore pled guilty yesterday to eight counts of gross sexual imposition for sexually abusing female students. His 2019 conviction on the charges was overturned by the North Dakota Supreme Court. The plea agreement avoids a new trial and Moore will be credited for time served and will have a 10-year sentence on each count suspended. President Biden will be visiting Minnesota for a memorial service for former Vice President Walter Mondale. Biden will deliver remarks Sunday at the service at the University of Minnesota campus. Mondale died last year at the age of 93. Biden describes Mondale as a dear friend and mentor and one of the nation's most dedicated patriots and public servants. The event will be live streamed for the public to watch. No cameras will be allowed in the courtroom during the trial of three Minneapolis police officers charged in connection with the death of George Floyd. Hennepin County Judge Peter Cahill made the ruling today. Defendants Thomas Lane, J. Alexander Kung, and Tao Thao face offenses of aiding and abetting second-degree murder and aiding and abetting second-degree manslaughter. Jury selection is set 
for June 14th. In a closer look tonight, a celebration in Moorhead for Habitat for Humanity. The local chapter has just completed construction on their 67th home built in Cass and Clay counties. In fact, in 2021, despite significant increases in costs for building materials, the organization was able to build four homes in the FM area. When I think about inflation this year, we're seeing a 30% increase in the cost of building from what we started at 12 months ago to where we're at today. And our suppliers are telling us next year at this time to anticipate 15 to 20% additional increase. So we're looking at upwards of 50% increase in a two-year window for a single-family home. Jim Nelson is the executive director for Lake Agassiz Habitat for Humanity. That's the chapter that serves Cass and Clay counties. He says people allowed to take ownership of homes built by Habitat contribute more than 250 sweat equity hours helping build their homes. They also repay the cost of the homes through income-based mortgages. Nelson explains the biggest reason people need their service simply the demand. There's a substantial number of families who spend more than 50% of their income on housing and that makes their life unmanageable. It's just impossible for them to afford health care, to afford nutrition, to afford meals. All four of the Habitat homes built in the FM area in 2021 were built in partnership with single mothers. The homes were built in Moorhead, Fargo, West Fargo and Dilworth. Sponsors and donors play a significant role in supporting the work of Habitat for Humanity. Well, if you enjoy getting your local news from the Nightly Review with Tom Tucker, be sure to hit the subscribe and bell buttons below to make sure you catch every report. And now for the latest on our chilly weather conditions, let's turn to Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki and the Skywatch Weather Center. Thanks, Tom. After a couple of unseasonably chilly days, we're going to see another cool one tonight down into the 20s and a little bit warmer for Wednesday. It will come with more of a wind factor with southeast winds increasing throughout the day, but highs closer to 50. Then clouds come back in advance of another storm system, bringing us scattered showers for Thursday and more widespread rain, it looks like. As we head into Friday and Saturday, we could pick up about an inch or two inches of rain before cooler weather settles in here on Sunday. It could happen to you or someone you love. One moment, one diagnosis can change everything. Thankfully, there's a program that helps caring people uplift families through a crisis. Lend a hand up, raising financial help and hope through community benefits and online campaigns. A program that boosts generosity so gifts go further. Lend a hand up helps you help your neighbors. Learn more and give at lendahandup.org. Welcome back to the Nightly Review. In tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation, my guest is Roger Maris Jr., the son of the legendary baseball player Roger Maris, who in 1961 hit 61 home runs. At that time, it was a new major league record. Unfortunately, the slugger lost his battle to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in 1985. Maris Jr. joined me to talk about his father's legacy and the family support for area cancer patients. I first asked Maris what it's like to be the son of a baseball icon. Well, you know, I guess for me, it doesn't seem any different than anything anybody else. You know, I feel like I'm just a normal guy, but obviously it comes with the territory of obviously you're with somebody who has a legacy and is considered a legend in his, in his sport. So big shoes to fill, but uh, you know, also just all the good things that are being done here in Fargo with his name, with the Cancer Center, Roger Maris All-Star Week. Uh, so when you look at it in those terms, big shoes to fill, but you know, I think just being able to try to continue his legacy and promote the Cancer Center and get the Cancer Center um, to continue doing what they're doing and keep building on what they're doing so that it becomes a national destination for cancer. I think it's just an honor to really just be Roger Maris Jr. Unfortunately, your father died from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in 1985, and my condolences to you and your family for your loss. What was the experience like for your father battling cancer? Well, it's, it's tough, you know, because back in those days, we didn't have the things we have today. So for him, 
uh, to have to do, deal with all that. It was it was really hard, and it was hard. You know, you're trying to raise six kids at the same time, so you got big family responsibilities and everything else. And uh, you know, he was a fighter, and he, he fought as best he could. But it's just one of those things. Just wasn't meant to be. And in the beginning, they said that was a a cancer if you have a cancer that's the one you want to have it's the most treatable and everything else but as we all know everybody reacts differently and for him it just didn't uh didn't work out for him and uh you know it just just went down fighting soon we'll be enjoying the second annual roger maris all-star week what can you tell us about it and what can we look forward to the week's all about creating awareness for cancer and celebrating the people who have cancer, uh, celebrating the survivors, celebrating uh, the people who've been touched by it, celebrating everybody at the Roger Maris Cancer Center and all the great work that they're doing over there. And in the same turn, giving back, uh, trying to do a lot of stuff for the kids. We've got a lot of camps and an academy running that week, uh, some golf tournaments and uh, some youth baseball. So just pretty much trying to give back and create awareness for cancer so we can continue to do the great work at the Cancer Center with all the research, the services, the education, the training, and uh, putting it on a mission to become a national destination for cancer. With regard to your father and his remarkable career, it might be a surprise to some people to know he's not at the Baseball Hall of Fame. Thoughts on that and how your dad might feel about that? Well, first of all, I don't think he'd really, that bother him a whole lot because I think this is his Hall of Fame right here in Fargo. And uh, so for him to have the Cancer Center, Roger Maris All-Star Week, his museum, uh, doing great things for a lot of different causes, uh, I think that's the big thing. Uh, I think this is where his legacy really is. Uh, for him not to be in the Hall of Fame, I think is a travesty, but you know, we, don't, we really just don't even focus on that and uh, we try to focus on the good things about uh, helping people and trying to find a cure for cancer. I'd like to thank Roger Maris Jr. for joining me for tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can learn much more about the Sanford Roger Maris Cancer Center in Fargo and the second annual Roger Maris All-Star Week by checking out the story online right now at WDAYRadioNow.com. The week runs June 13th through the 19th and includes sports camps, a youth academy, and a celebrity golf tournament. Well, that will do it for this Tuesday night, April 26, 2022. I'm Tom Tucker. Thanks for watching the Nightly Review.